Hello, I'm here today to tell you a little bit about our family boat, the Gleam. The Gleam's 83 years old and she's been owned by our family for, for most of that time. She's 42 feet by 12 and she's been an important part of the local fishing industry, not only in Nelson but also around Derville Island and, and the Sounds. She was built, believe it or not, the keel was laid in, in 1946 in Picton by a boat builder called Jack Morgan. Now this was just after the war, so materials were scarce, so they even used recycled house material in her back in the day. So you know, it's an important note that recycling's been around a long time. She was being built for an oil company manager. He was working for Atlantic Oil in Wellington. Unfortunately, during the build process, he passed away. So the Gleam ended up being finished and she sat in Parramatta for two or three years, really going to disarray, but, but waiting for a new owner. That stage, Len Leo, early, early 50s or late, late 40s, a farmer from Derville Island called Len Leo that had a farm around Greville Harbour on the eastern side, or sorry, western side of Derville Island. He bought her and used her predominantly for a farm vessel. At the time, being 42 feet, she was one of the largest vessels in the region and became quite popular. Because of her carrying capacity, she was able to carry a lot of farming equipment, material. Um, she was used for various roles supplying different projects, including the Farewell Spit Lighthouse rebuild. She was used for carting the mail. She did a, the mail run around the Derville Island and Marlborough and Polaris Sounds for a number of years. And she was even used for, for burials at sea. So she had Quite a, quite a long history even back in those days. In 1953, that's when her relationship started with the Gard family. So my grandfather, Jack Gard, the boat builder from Nelson, who many of you may know, he purchased her, he took, took ownership of her Easter Friday, 1953. The main reason for buying her was her capacity and size, but also so he could supply timber and carry materials for his own boat building business back in Pukatea Bay down in Derville Island. That's where a lot, of, a lot of vessels were built over a period of time. In the uh, 1950s or mid-1950s, he moved to Nelson and set up Guard Sea Services 237 Haven Road, where he built a lot of other further vessels. So at that stage, the Gleam was still being used for, for carrying things and carrying passengers. She was doing fishing trips and chartering and, and just being very, very useful to the, to the Sounds and Derville Island community. In the, the late 50s, early 60s, they decided that commercial fishing might be worth a crack. And in the 60s, my, my uncles John and Chris Gard, so that's the son of Jack Gard, they actually started moving around the Polaris and Marlborough Sounds, hand-picking mussels off the rocks. Back in those days, there were, there were no farms, no farm mussels. If you wanted a green lip mussel, you actually picked them off a rock. So they did that for a number of years, which is very, very hard work. And we still have photos of the gleam loaded up with sacks of green lip mussels. So I love to look at those old photos. It just shows how, how long she's been involved with the seafood industry. Then in the mid 60s, they started dredging. They got sick of the hand picking things and they put a dredge on the back and started chasing oysters mussels and scallops, which Nelson and the Marlborough Sounds and Plura Sounds are, are famous for. So she did that for, for a number of years and then early 70s, late 60s, they decided to give trawling a go. So they converted her. Originally she had a full coach house. You'll see the wheelhouse on her. It used to go nearly back to the, back to the gantry there for passengers, carrying passengers, etc. Because she did that for a number of years. What a lot of people don't realise is she took passengers between the Sounds, Nelson, Parramatta and Porirua for, for quite a period of time. But at that stage the family decided she was going to go fishing. A combination of trawling and dredging. And she continued to do so from the late 60s all the way through to about 2015. So my father, Philip Gard, has, has, he, he owns the vessel today and he's run it for many decades. I remember as a, as a young child spending most of my school holidays and Christmas holidays on the Gleam down the Sounds in Derville Island and doing all sorts of fun activities that kids used to do. Being a, a classic fisherman though, they, most of the Christmas holidays ended in tears because Dad just couldn't help himself. You know, after three or four days, we're enjoying some family time and on beaches and looking around, having a great old time. But Dad always knew that the red cod were around at that time of the year around Derville Island. So 
inevitably I can remember at least two or three Christmases in a row, oh, fair to say wrecked or sabotaged by Dad because he decided we might just have one trawl just to see what fish is around. And he knew what was there all right. He, he knew it was well planned out and pretty much every time the nets would come up absolutely loaded with red cod predominantly. More than the boat could handle. And of course he had no crew, it was mum, me and my two sisters. So here we are, we're having our, our, our lovely enjoyable Christmas holiday and we ended up up to our guts in red cod, smelly old red cod. Uh, that put the end to a few of our Christmas holidays and whenever dad threatened to get, take us down to the island on holiday, mum would make him take the fishing gear off. So, so you know, she's had, a, she's had a long history. As you can see, she's looking a bit rough at the moment, but you know, you would too at the age of 83 years old. She's retired, as is my father, but she's still a very important part of the guard family. She's undertaking a, a major refit. We've put uh, some, some waterproofing and fiberglass and plywood on the bow deck. Um, she has new bulwarks down the side and we're about to do a new wheelhouse roof just to stop the water ingress and, and to tidy her up and give her, give her that, uh, that facelift that everyone at 83 needs. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, she does look a bit of a mess at the moment, but, but don't fear, she's going to look beautiful again and she's going to be around for another 80 years because, you know, she's an important part of the Guard family and, and it's important to the, to the Nelson community and the fishing industry because we believe there is no other vessels, commercial vessels in New Zealand that's had as many shellfish, particularly scallops, oysters and mussels over the deck as she's had. So you know she's a foundation member of the New Zealand commercial fishing industry and she deserves a really good retirement. Um, so what we're going to do now is we'll, we'll go down and uh, yes she, she's in a bit of a state but she's getting better and we'll talk you through a bit of the equipment on board and maybe some of the stories that I can recall as a child working on and around the gleam. Here we are on the gleam, the 42 by 12 foot gleam. Uh, as you can see, she's under a little bit of repair. She's having a little bit of, bit of tender loving care at the moment. Um, some of the work that we've done, you see the mast has been down and all nicely painted and ready to go. Uh, underfoot, she's had new, new plywood and fiberglass over the deck, so that's to, to stop any leaks and just to preserve her basically because you know the enemy of, of timber vessels is, is leaking at the end of the day. Um, you'll see the front of the wheelhouse, yeah, it looks a little bit untidy, but also bit of fiberglass resin and again we're, we're keeping the water out and making sure she's watertight for, for many more decades. Um, bit of work to do around the, around the wheelhouse roof, we've obviously got to put the radar stand back up, look after that, resurface the life raft, reinstall a bit of wiring, so you know, there's plenty to keep us busy at the end of the day. Um, what we'll do, we'll make our way down to the stern carefully uh, and yeah, I'll show you what's going on down there, so follow me. Just take care, watch your step. So, um, there's not a lot changed down here really. This is really the working end. If you remember I talked about the fact that she was a passenger boat, a, a freight boat converted into a fishing vessel. So originally, as I said earlier, the, the accommodation and wheelhouse came all the way back to here. So, uh, you know, when uh, my, my family tells me that, that when they were running passengers and doing all those sorts of things, it was great, they had lots of room inside and it was wonderful, but um, the boys, uh, my uncle Chris and John, decided that actually, you know what, they enjoyed commercial fishing more than running passengers and they, they tried for several years to get their father, Jack Guard, to, to cut back some of the wheelhouse to give them a bit of a fish hold and maybe a little bit more room for fishing gear and not people because you know they wanted to move into fishing not people. Um, so the rumour goes Grandad was away somewhere, he'd, he'd gone away to, to pick up a boat or do something um, up north and the boys couldn't wait anymore, they got a, got a little bit keen and they took a chainsaw to the back of the wheelhouse on the gleam and uh, as you can see she's now back here and she's been converted into a fishing vessel. So. So again, you know, quite a, quite a different sort of a past. When you look at some of the equipment here, 
Um, we've got here, these are the standard old trawl winches, so you know, for trawling or dredging, so they're obviously used to let the, either the dredges or the trawl gear out and to haul them back in. They're an essential part of equipment on any fishing vessel anywhere in the world. Without good hydraulics and the ability to, to pull your fishing gear in and out, well, she's a pretty tough job by hand. So, you know, these are really, really crit critical pieces of equipment. Um, under here, obviously, if you're going to be catching seafood, well, under here is the, uh, down here is the fish hold, and this is where the product goes and where the ice goes to keep everything well, uh, well chilled, ready to hit the, hit the fresh markets when you come and unload. Gantry, so most vessels have some sort of an A-frame or a gantry, and again, that's just used to, to, to work the fishing gear. Um, you'll see the blocks from the winches, so the wires go from the winch, winches through that block, through that block, and then out they go attached to the fishing gear. So at the moment, she's set up for dredging, so for scallop, oystering, or, or mussel dredging. There's no, no trawl net or trawl gear. What you'll see down on the bottom is uh, that lump of steel there, and amongst all that mess there, that's a scallop dredge. That's a standard scallop slash uh, oyster dredge. Um, eight foot wide, which is pretty much standard commercial size. Um, and you know what? They're actually uh, they're hard work to handle, and, and it's a pretty, cool, pretty physical, demanding job, but I used to love it. The Gleam was a fantastic dredge boat. She was always ahead of the game and one of the best and one of the fastest out there, and she's done it for a long time. So you'll see that the aluminium tray that the blue dinghy is on, that's where you land all your shellfish. So effectively, you have a, one of those steel dredges on that side, one on that side, and you work one at a time. So one would come up, you lift it up using your block and tackle, up the top of the A-frame there, so you lift it up, 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 then you lower it down onto that, uh, back down onto the aluminium tray there, and you hook the back side of it, and basically you tip it upside down, and all the shellfish comes out, and that's where your men stand, your crew stand against there, manually measuring and sorting. If you have a look here, see that there? So that's a measure, that's actually a scallop, that's the legal commercial size for scallops. So you'll be standing here, sorting through mountains and mountains of things at times, picking scallops out, making sure they're of size, putting them into a bin, and then those bins get tipped into larger bags. And you know, you might get, um, when we, we're commercially fishing, you might get anywhere up to 2,000 kilos a day, um, which would see this deck here full of scallops and then at the end of the day you would unload and uh, in away you go. Then you would repeat that the following day, um, five days a week over a period of, I don't know, 10, 12 weeks during the season. Um, up here we've got, that's the net roller. So, so that stays on here during the, during the dredging season. That's where your trawl net is normally kept and you deploy it from there out into the water where you put trawl doors onto it which spread the front of the trawl then you hook these wires up one on each side and you let wire out and away it goes and then you know you're, you're just um, gently skimming along the top of the top of the seabed catching fish so the gleams actually uh, got the ability to trawl and catch finfish or dredge and catch shellfish so which many trawlers do that you know nowadays um, which makes them you know exciting and, and you know, hard work, make no mistake, these boats are hard work. And particularly on rough days where you can see you don't have a lot of room here. There's a bit of clutter because of the refit at the moment. Um, but it's definitely hard physical work, but it's enjoyable. It's that good hard work where, you know, you might go home exhausted and tired and a, and a bit sore and a bit achy, but you sleep well at night and you know you've had a great day. Because every day on an inshore commercial fishing boat is generally a great day, particularly when you're catching the weather's good and the crew are behaving. It's absolutely addictive and a wonderful lifestyle. So highly recommended it, uh, recommend it. The Guard family, my family's been fishing since 1827 and every one of us that, that has that long history involved in, in the fishing industry will tell you fish stocks are healthier now for us than they've ever been. So, you know, ask the experts at the end of the day. And you know, the Gleam has done her bit She's been involved in a very sustainable fishery for many decades, and now she's enjoying her much-deserved retirement. Okay, so we'll have a, have, a, have a better look at these winches so you can understand. Um, they're hydraulically driven. They effectively have two sides, so this side here is for fishing gear on this side, and that is for fishing gear on that side. You have a brake to stop gear going out, 
and to distance, you actually have in here to ensure you want to wind the gear up, you have a clutch or what we call a dog that's in gear there. And away you go, you pull this lever and away she'll go, you're hauling your gear. If you want to stop, then you do the brake up, pull the gear out and you now disengage your clutch. So it's very much a clutch, but pretty mechanical like a vehicle to a certain degree. Um, two hydraulic levers, this one here is for this side, this one's for this side, and this one here actually operates the net roller or the little Gilson winch to, to pull the gear aboard. So very, very useful. Every, every vessel has to have a winch of some sort. Um, you've got our little beauty here, which is uh, a bit of an oldie, what they call a surge drum. Um, there's some other, it's got some other names as well, but they're not very PC nowadays, so we won't discuss that. Um, but this here is designed to, you wrap a rope around here, goes up to the gantry, and what that will do, it gives you the power to lift big bags of fish in that aboard. So yeah, winches are an important part of any fishing vessel, and uh, they're getting a little bit of TLC, and uh, yeah, that's the winches on the gleam. So hopefully you enjoyed a little bit of a tour around, around the gleam, our 83 year old vessel. It's been an important part of the of the guard family in the New Zealand fishing industry. As you can see, she's under a bit of repair, and, and next time we'll we'll take you inside, have a bit of a look around, and uh, see some of the improvements we've been done, and, and try and get her back to her former former glory. So thanks for watching.